Bonjour guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to find the critical path for a construction project. Now for more videos covering engineering problems or AP exam questions, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Also, make sure you watch until the end because I'm going to share with you some practice problems that you can use to study for your test. Oh yeah, everybody now. Okay guys, so we are giving a PDM diagram for a construction project involving couple activities and we need to find the critical path. Now the critical path is the path where we have activities and those activities cannot be delayed. If any of those activities is delayed, well the whole project gets delayed. So in construction, usually we watch out for that critical path because we don't want to delay the project. Now, if we go to the reference manual under construction, you guys will see it doesn't really tell you how to find the critical path. So I'm going to share with you some notes to help you find the critical path. You should add those notes to your cheat sheet. I already talked about the importance of having cheat sheets for your FE exam or if you're studying for your engineering classes. If you haven't watched that video yet, I will leave the link above there. Okay guys, so to find the critical path, we first need to find the early start, early finish, late start and late finish. And to do that, we usually use forward pass and backward pass. So let's start with the forward pass. So forward pass tells us to start from the left and work ourselves towards the right. Also, it tells us that early start for the first activity is zero. So here I'm going to put zero. Now to find the early finish, all I got to do is add duration to the early start. So I'm going to have zero plus three, which gives me three. So here I'm going to have three. Now this, these arrows, what they mean is that activity B, C and D can only start till activity A finishes. So all these activities are going to start after day three. And so early start of B, it's going to be equal to the early finish of activity A, same thing with C and D. So let's write that down. Now to find the early finish for these activities, all I gotta do is add duration to the early start. So here we have three plus five is eight, seven plus three is 10, 10 plus three is 13. Now let's take a look at activity E. Well, activity E cannot start till B finishes. So the early start of E is gonna be the same as early finish for B. And so 8 plus 6 gives us 14, and so that's going to be the early finish for E. So now let's take a look at activity F. Well, F is actually dependent on two activities, B and C. So in that situation, we actually have to pick the maximum early finish. So for this case, it's going to be 10, because that is the maximum early finish. Also, think about it this way. This means that activity C has to finish before F starts. Now, if B finishes at 8, but C has not finished yet. C is going to finish till day 10. And F cannot start till activity C finishes first. And that's why we always go with the maximum early finish. Now, 10 plus 8 gives me to 18. And so that's going to be the early finish for activity F. Now, for activity G, is dependent on three activities, E, F, and D. Again, we have to pick the maximum early finish. And that's because all these activities have to be done before G starts. So if we start at 13, F hasn't finished yet. So we have to wait till activity F finishes, then we can start activity G. Now 18 plus 4 gives us 22, and 22 is our early finish for activity G. Now this is the forward pass, now let's do the backward pass. So for the backward pass, we're going to actually start from the right, and the early finish is going to be the same as the late finish. Now to calculate for the late start, we're going to do 22 minus duration, which is 4, and so that's going to give us 18. Now all these activities are going to have 18. It's the same concept as the forward pass. Now to find the late start, all we got to do is late finish minus duration. Now if we take a look at activity B, it's actually dependent on two activities, E and F. So which one do we choose? Well, we go with the one that has the minimum late start. So that means I have to go with the 10. So 10 minus 5, that gives me 5. Now for activity C is only dependent on F, so that's going to be easy. So this is going to be equal to the same as this. So I have 10, 10 minus 7, we have 3. And then for activity A, again, it's dependent on three activities. So we're going to go with the minimum late start, and that's activity C. So that's 3 here. This is 5, that's 8, so 3 is actually the minimum. So this here is going to be 3. Now 3 minus 3 gives us 0. So that's how we do the PDM diagram. Now let's find the critical path. So the critical path is A, C, F, and G, and that's because we have zero total float. What that means is that if any of these activities gets delayed by just one day, the whole project is going to be delayed. 
Now the way we calculate the total float, we do the late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. And so if those give you zero, that means we have a zero total float. And so that will be your critical path. So the answer is A. If you guys want some practice problems or some cheat sheets, you can visit my website, intro your email address, and I will send them to you along with some tips on how to tackle this exam. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck with your studying, and I will see you soon. À la prochaine. Oh yeah, everybody now.